weren't a camping family, but I had this one opportunity with a youth group where we built our own wooden backpack frames. And we loaded them up with all our gear, divided the food, mine included the cartons of eggs. A Couple hours into the hike, the trail gets steeper and narrows. I lose balance. I start tumbling over into the ravine, struggling to tuck and roll. I had some scrapes, but those eggs, what a mess. You know, everyone was polite, but who wants to be the kid that ruins camp breakfast, right? I lost all interest in camping until three decades later when the end of my marriage motivates me to build some new muscle. The trainer I meet is a heavy weightlifting trainer, but he's also healing some war trauma with long trail runs, and training and camping in the forest. Intrigued, I sign on to lift, learn, heal some of my own trauma. I start out in the gym, lifting weights, but I notice this gym outside with the earth is way more interesting. Rocks are weights, sticks extend my stretch, and trail running opens my senses. He's been talking a lot about this really special circle of trees out by the whole rainforest. So we venture out. The excitement builds the closer we get deeper into the forest until suddenly he drops to the ground. And he starts crying and screaming and convulsing. I'm thinking, is he hit, bit, war trauma? He catches enough breath and finally chokes out. They took the trees. I look over and the circle's gone. Only stumps remain. He's shaking inconsolable. I, I, I didn't know those trees, but his pain is so palpable. I can feel the loss of when friends fall. I used to see the forest as scary, dangerous, but training in the Earth's gym, it's started to rewild my awareness. Rewilding is letting nature lead to restore natural systems. Like when the wolf was returned to Yellowstone National Park and rehabilitated an entire habitat. Restoring a missing piece allows the ecology to rebalance. For me, rewilding has been to reintroduce myself to the nature around me so that missing parts of my inner ecology can rebalance. According to the National Library of Medicine, all living cells use the same DNA code to store hereditary information. I also see DNA as our direct nature access. We share 50% of our DNA with trees, while in a life-sustaining relationship exchanging carbon for oxygen, everything in nature is in relationship to everything else. The moon with the tides, the flora with the fauna. All the chemicals in your body can be found in the earth and its atmosphere. If you are what you eat, drink, and breathe, where does that food, water, and oxygen come from, right? You know the root word for human? Humus, that rich earth soil. And for animal, animus, spirited. In ecology, oikos, home, home. Author Richard Liu, who coined the phrase nature deficit disorder, describes the human loss of our alienation from nature, diminished use of senses, 
attention difficulties, and increased rates of emotional and physical illness. A job relocates me to Lake Tahoe, and now I live in a forest. It's like camping every day. And when the bears go through my yard, I'm reminded that my upbringing never prepared me for living in a wildlife habitat. Except now, I get answers, insights, even songs, walking softly on the land to understand its language, language that comes from the land. I say hello to the trees. I share gratitude for the water. This has increased my connection, my grounding, and my personal well-being. While I'm also way more aware of how many systems around me are out of balance and why. One day, the American Association of University Women asked that I teach a self-esteem building session with a youth group they're sponsoring at the junior high. I show the girls what you build in your body, you build in your mind. Training in nature's earth's gym, the earth's gym. And if you're struggling with something, write it down. Go for a walk and be open to the wisdom that comes. The girls share their takeaways at the closing circle. Most are excited about a free gym and others how fun it is to stretch and tone with sticks and stones. It really is. One girl, very quiet, shares her relief at knowing she might find counsel connecting to nature. Surprised by this benefit, one counselor leans in, can you teach this at college? Ironically, years later, I do, including Berkeley. To rewild yourself is to consciously allow the fullness of your nature to reemerge. Step one, watch where you step. Something or someone may live there. Step two, try walking with the earth. Slow your roll, your breath, and open your senses. Then you might see that tree waving to you, hear the song in the water, feel the rhythm in the rain. The indigenous people are right. We belong to the earth. Heck, we are the earth in a spirited form. And our true nature is nature.